my name is vikram uh, vikram jit singh i work as a partner with kpmg part of the larger what we call digital trust practice digital transformation is really changing everything every aspect of our lives how we interact amongst each other both personally and professionally so thank you for being here in fact i'll uh, use this opportunity now to request gauri shankar to probably chime in uh, he represents represents microsoft one of the big players in this space and then what is being done in microsoft ecosystem is something uh, we can probably get to hear a couple of minutes thank you thanks vikram ji hi my name is gauri shankar and i lead the azure infra business as we call it for it's companies in india so as vikram said right each and every organization is going through a transformation and post pandemic it has become more evident for all our customers and the more i talk to the leaders in it's industry hybrid is a concept that is becoming more and more prominent and it is here to stay uh, wipro has not been able to bring more than 20% of its people back to office and there is a reason for it so hybrid is going to stay here and what is microsoft doing to enable our customers to ensure the experience is seamless for the employees and also for the end customers if you see our innovations uh, uh, in microsoft in past 6 months 9 months 1 year are primarily focused on hybrid work how do we enable hybrid work for your employees how do you give you experience where you manage your hybrid infrastructure for your customers and how do you build a security which is on top of this hybrid environment to secure your infrastructure so these are the primary two three themes that we'll touch upon and as uh, bikram mentioned we'll probably try and learn from your experiences and uh, you know take up some of the best practices uh, uh, for the industry so that's that's the whole idea bikram back to you. uh manish let me start with you uh, you know its industry as in that is a stepping stone we are essentially uh characterized by innovation as in we are saying yeah we would innovate and bring do things differently but then while we want to focus on innovation there would be some challenges also in maybe by experience not just within your firm but then also otherwise from your larger experience at working across how are some of these challenges are dealt with which are related to both hybrid working and challenges in innovation today more than 50% population is millennials less than 25 years age the way the it has come up you know it it has it has come up where in use of technology the way we have you know and in the last year the way we talk the way we interact and i talk about chat boxes all of that today you order from blinkit you know and you've not liked the product there's no questions asked there's a you know there is a technology that is playing so the way we talk the way we operate the way we shop everything the way we entertain ourselves you know what is the future as in of course we we can only make guesses but then what is the future which is there from a culture perspective on hybrid and then uh, some of the challenges how are you or as a new interact with the organizations that they are dealing with from a hybrid work perspective in hybrid workforce is like the concept is clear that okay either you have to be in office or you have to be at client side or it has to be mix i was referring to one report from nascom um, and was referring to that where it was talking about from employees perspective 80% of the employees have asked for that they would like to work for an hybrid environment yeah. in the similar report it was mentioned that 70% of organizations are ready that okay we are we are ready to allow you to work for them so there's a there's a gap still we are not uh, okay for that our employee can work in a hybrid way though there's a demand part and all the point manish which you said that uh, it's very relevant that we are dealing with the employees or the talent now uh, my the same talent can i can hire someone from uh, lucknow i can hire someone from berlin i can hire someone from uh, visakhapatnam and similar opportunities are available for employees as well so the talent definition has really gone global i'll request gauri uh, gauri shankar to really step in uh, from one of the big providers what are the maybe a few other things which are available for all the its companies today through which we can leverage and really enable the hybrid operations we have our solutions on azure which is more of a virtual desktop 
offering, right? Which is a native offering from Azure, as well as we work with our partners like Citrix and VMware. What it does primarily is, as you rightly said, you hire a resource, you need not wait for him to get a laptop. He's got a personal laptop, boot in, access whatever he's supposed to access from an infrastructure that is hosted on Azure and get his work. There is a company that was working, right? Their customers start to build them what they call it as uh, zero day billing. That means if a start date of a resource is today and if it is delayed by three or four days, the, the contract or the customer end customer deducts that amount from their overall contract. How do you enable a zero day billing or stop a zero day billing loss? You know who's the guy, which place he is based out of with whatever laptop or resource he has, enable a service or an infrastructure that runs out of public cloud, which is Azure in this case, which is secure, which gives him access to the resources that he's supposed to work on. It is not like, a, you know, you can give access to everything and anything that uh, uh, is there in your organization. So role-based access can be given. So this is something that we have come up with. Uh, same way, if there is a very senior resource who is joining from a remote place, we have something called Windows 365 now as an offering, right? Which gives, again, the entire suite of, uh, you know, enterprise uh, suite, which includes your operating system, your uh, office, uh, any collaboration suite at his disposal. Because his nature of job demands that. And a company is to embark on the journey, what would be your advice or suggestions for them? The way I see, I think for us, digital transformation is something, it's a transformation that has to happen. Companies have to do it. It's, it's not a choice which is there. It is, uh, and uh, you mentioned about some of the earlier uh, new tech companies with New Age. But really, every company has to transform. Otherwise, some new tech company is going to and typical example we take of OYO or uh, the, uh, the Ubers, or, which disrupted the complete industry, either you change or. So I think as the companies get into, uh, into this, so they have to, one, that commitment that from a leadership perspective has to be there that we have to do it. There is no, it is not a choice. It is a, uh, that second is, the technology appreciation has to come. Technology is important. And I think that technology is there now, whether it is, uh, if you're talking about the cloud, uh, whether it is cloud enabled services, say, for example, if I build a, a national language processing system, it is very straightforward. I just go to the cloud and I have that service available with me. So a lot of those cloud enabled services has made it very easy. Getting the compute power, it is no challenge, I can just log in and ask for a, uh, earlier I may have to buy uh, systems and all of that is gone. So technology enablement is there. Um, uh, I think that uh, the senior commitment is what is required. The third part comes is the collaboration, the business part and the technology have to collaborate together. Upskilling the employees become a challenge because you can enable all the technologies, but they, if they don't know how to use them, in the technology may still get dropped and then somewhere we may not be able to leverage all the investments we're making. So some guidance or uh, some experiential things that you want to share on. As you rightly said that uh, upskilling is becoming very, very important and challenging because no matter what technology we adopt, but if we don't have the right workforce to use that technology, we, we cannot survive. So, and the another challenge is that uh, as you say that people are working and working from home and they have a lot of opportunities these days. So what we have seen so far is another challenge uh, while we are upskilling the employees. Uh, it's very easy for the employees to just change the switch the job. So what investment we are doing on upskilling the employees is sometimes becoming a very big challenge for us. But at the same time, we have taken few steps like uh, we have made in-house learning portal uh, wherein the employees can check in their learning hours, they can adopt which uh, training they want to go through and then they can uh, apply for the certifications and so whatever technology the company is going to adopt. So we have made it very simple for them to just go log in and take the training and move ahead. Investments would have been made 
uh, in enabling your hybrid Great workforce. Time. So maybe you can throw some insights onto kind of investments and how are they really paying back for you and how others can leverage from your experience. It's crucial. Like somebody said, I don't remember exactly who, but uh, you train somebody and you have the fear that they leave. Mm -hmm. But what happens if you don't train them and then they stick with you forever? So, uh, so with that in light, uh, the change, digital transformation actually, um, it's, it's a lot of times where in which uh, we see a lot of buzzwords come and go. But then it is only few of them kick off and digital transformation was actually one of them. Yes, over the years they have gained a lot of meanings to it. Uh, but then in the true sense it has kicked off and I think the accelerator was COVID itself. Yep. Without question of a doubt, everybody had to work from home. They started seeing holes in their systems. Uh, prior to that, people or specifically from the infrastructure side, people who said, we cannot, will not open our infrastructure for anything. If you need access, you have to come to office. That was, it was just obliterated out of the way. I mean, they had to open it up and they saw, it was a Pandora's box that opened up. So that's where we came in. And uh, from then to now, a few years back to now, what we have realized is um, a software engineer is no longer just a software engineer. It's just the reality and that was our path um, uh, path from then to now as to what the training has been. Because even if we talk about the cloud, when we talk about Fortune 500 or at least let's say the 50 top out of that, nobody is willing to move completely to the cloud. They still want their own data center. It's not about the finances. Um, it's about many other things, including security and, you know, all of those things. They want to own the data. They are not willing to let it go out. Maybe if we continue with that, the high rate growth that we have experienced through last very many years, if we continue, uh, help us with some perspective on how the cloud leverage can really enable that growth journey that we have experienced for organizations, ITS organizations which are maybe getting formed or going through a transformation journey, etc. One of the things that we always uh, were conscious of that being in the air cargo domain specifically, it's quite uh, uh, not normal to find people who understand that business. So we always had a program to bring in uh, young people and first let them understand the business. And I, even if they were software engineers and we gave them multiple options. So we've been having a very decent control on attrition until last year. And last year was something, you know, it was something which was, it was like an extraordinary situation. Something that we didn't really understand why it happened. But as uh, Manish has come out, $36 billion came in. So where did it go? It went in higher salaries as well. So we had a 28% against the normal of 10, 11%. So I think a lot of companies had that challenge. But at the other side for us, the, the saving grace was this hybrid uh, ability to um, churn higher number of people, get them on board, get them trained, let them go through knowledge transfer at a faster pace, build uh, as many uh, soft, uh, uh, you know, content to be able to deliver faster online and to keep up with the attrition and uh, make sure that we are not losing out. Now, our business is about building um, a reservation for reservation systems, revenue accounting systems, and, uh, you know, for the airlines. So it's very, they're mission critical in that sense. And, uh, and with time, when we started off, it was dedicated servers where we would host the, the, the solution, the products. And then, of course, the cloud became the, the norm. And I think with the HA and DR, our life is better sorted, to be honest. And uh, I, I, I'll summarize and close. Thank you for taking our Thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.